patience, grasshopper, patience. <laughs> that was a comment from a vlog fan and frankly a friend at this point. Shout out to Susie, I laughed when I read that. I'm just trying to be patient through this cross training, hence the crazy hair. I uh, just got out of the pool and I did not do any cross training filming today, uh, but it was a good day in the pool and on the bike. Oh my goodness, I'm just trying to be patient. Not necessarily with the training, the cross training. It's it's going fine. It's the, the <laughs> I wanna make great vlogs for you and I'm just like, we're two weeks in now to maintaining a daily running vlog on this channel every single day on crutches. And I feel like I'm, I'm pulling it off, but I just, I wanna create such great content for all of you. So I'm just reminding myself, you guys are here for me and I appreciate that and I know it'll be back. The running will be back, the beautiful shots in the mountains will be back, the epic, uh, t you know, tempo runs, whatever you, whatever I end up filming for all of you, it will return at some point. So with that said, let's dive into it. I have your questions here on my phone. These are questions that you have asked me over the last basically 10 days. There's been a lot of them, especially since we can't live stream now where I usually field these questions. Instead, we're gonna do it here uh, on the daily vlog. And basically, I will of course always be honest with you. You might not like to hear what I have to say. Uh, and I have to keep my answers a little broad only because I don't know your entire background of training. Uh, that's where, you know, that's certainly where an individual coach comes into play, where they can get to really know your history within running, because that does make a big difference as far as how much volume you've, you've run over the past, not just the past 12 months, but frankly, over the past three years, five years, 10 years, uh, your experience with different intensity levels of training. So with these answers that I'm about to give, I will, I will do my best to be specific, but also keeping in mind, I don't know your entire history. All right, let's dive in. And we, yes, we are gonna talk about 5Ks, half marathons, marathons, there's ultras, there's a lot going on here. Let's just go for it. Come on, where's the first one here? All right, this is from Matthew. Matthew asks, hey Seth, I'm about to be a sophomore in high school and these are my best times for different distances. 521 in the mile, 1137 in the two mile, and 1946. He wants to try and run basically faster than 1704 because that is his school 5K uh, sc uh, school record. So he, he asked, could you give me some tips to help me get faster? For example, how often I need to practice and the type of workouts I need to do and how far I need to run. Matthew. So obviously, so Matthew, great question. And we will be talking more about this in the series of 5K videos that I'm about to create for all of you. Remember, I announced that yesterday, but I will help uh, Matthew as best I can right now. Matthew, if you're a, so you're a sophomore, I would recommend if you're going into your junior year, if you're if you've been running 30 miles a week or 35 miles a week, consider bumping it up. If let's say it's 30, consider bumping it up to 40, and then maybe your senior year it can be 50. Now, I am not a proponent of high mileage for high schoolers, like really high mileage. I think it, okay, for me, I, I trained at about 35 miles a week, which was good, but I think if I would have bumped it up to 45 to 50, I do think my 5K uh, PR times from high school would have come down. I would also recommend, Matthew, starting your summer training, uh, not in early June, not in late May. I, I lean toward the mid-June to late June timeframe. Um, and there, I'm gonna talk more about this in those 5K videos I'll be creating. And then I would not train every day of the week. I would lean toward, to start, I would lean toward three to four days a week uh, at the beginning of the training block in the summer, and then slowly increase that to five, and then eventually six. And um, I, I love training every day of the week, I'll just say it. But I do know that some high schoolers need a break, like your body might be growing at a rate that you can't even comprehend uh, ana uh, anatomically. Uh, basically, your anatomy, like it's changing so quickly, your body might need a day off. So anyway, Matthew, those are, that's like a very rough outline of how I would build training, but I would start in mid to late June, uh, three to four days a week. Uh, I would start with 20 miles a week, 15 to 20 miles a week, that's it. And then slowly build from there. Uh, so I hope that helps as far as building a base. And then you're probably wondering, well, how do I actually run faster? Oh man. Um, okay, I'm gonna throw out also plyometrics and strength training. And I think this connects to some other answers I'm gonna give as well. I think high schoolers, when I look at high school guys, 
and ladies, but especially guys, like guys develop a little later than ladies, you probably already know that. I'm like, guys, we gotta get a little stronger. Like, you guys, some of you, and this is me, I weighed a buck, I weighed like a buck. <laughs> Uh, my junior year of high school and then my senior year I finally grew a little bit but I'm telling you guys like don't be afraid to uh, build body strength especially don't be afraid to work on your leg strength and I won't get into details but I do think high school guys could work on getting stronger and I'm telling you it will help you run faster it really will and uh, I'll talk more about that in the 5k videos moving on okay uh, next from Patrick, how did you get onto CU's team? I'm a high school runner, only a sophomore. Oh, another sophomore. And I'm interested in learning more about the recruitment process and all, and really like your videos. Keep up the hard work. Thank you, Patrick. So Patrick, I walked on. I was not recruited out of high school. I ran 1627 in high school. Um, I tried to walk on my freshman year of college. I did not make it. I trained a year alone and bumped up my mileage from basically 40 miles a week to 70 miles a week. Whoa. It was uh, it was good. I stayed healthy and my body was, I think my body was ready for it. I didn't get injured that entire year. I frankly didn't do much speed training, Patrick, like really hardly any at all. It was mostly aerobic development at a higher level. Um, a lot of, you know, hill runs, uh, meaning I didn't run uh, flat all the time. I got some hill work in and uh, nothing like crazy. Like I wasn't doing 20 mile long runs. Probably my long runs were in the 14 mile range would be my guess if I if just off of memory and um, I I got faster. It's like it's amazing what volume can do for your speed if you can stay healthy. That is the trick and I'm learning that right now, right? Um, so that's a brief outline, Patrick. I hope that helps you just a little bit. We will again dive more into this very soon. Oh my gosh, this is another one about walking on. Okay. Ooh, I forget the name of this gentleman. I think it might have been Mark, but I'm not positive. Sorry about that. I forgot to write down your name. Okay. He says, this summer I'm looking at putting a good base in to hopefully try to walk on to his cross country team at uh, Kansas State or run a fast 5k in Oklahoma. Um, he'll be starting by his base building phase and peaking around 60 miles per week. But I was wondering what sort of 5k 10k workouts you might recommend me to throw in once I start Start getting into late July and August in order to tune up for tryouts or a road 5k. I will be running tempo runs weekly by the end of my base phase, but what else would you recommend me to throw in later in my training block to specify my training? Great question, and I'm not sure what uh, distance. So for me to walk on to the CU cross country team, you have to race an 8k, which is basically just over five miles approximately. And uh, so I don't know what distance you're shooting for for the tryouts. I, I wrote back to him and said, I would recommend shooting for that 70 to 75 miles a week. Again, listening to your body. I don't know your entire history, but I just, that 70 to 75 miles a week, it's amazing what kind of fitness you can gain and stay healthy at that volume level um, if, you, if you have a history of staying healthy. Um, but, okay, I wrote back also, I really love six by 1k with a starting out at two minute rest but then eventually dropping it down to nine uh to 90 second rest that's six by 1k on grass not on a track not on dirt on grass now especially if your cross country course is grass or if you're racing a lot on golf courses grass is hard to run on and and if the grass can have so, so find a good park uh, if you can get access to a golf course, great. Uh, but roll, just like rolling grass hills is really challenging. It might not, and it's good for your body so that you're not pounding pavement. You're not pounding even, even, uh, dirt roads that are really packed down. That's, it's not pavement, but it can be pretty close to pavement if it's a dirt road that's really packed down. So I'm a big fan of rolling grass hills, six by one K eventually, like you have to build up to it, but if you can hit a solid six by one K workout with again, 90 second rest, maybe two minutes, depending on where you're at in your, in your building phase. Um, yes, that would be my recommendation. Also, I'm a big fan of like 12 by 300. Um, you can just measure it off on a, again, on grass or a gravel road, 12 by 300, just getting that turnover going. So 
with a 100 meter jog. Uh, I'll add that as well. So good question and keep me updated. I apologize that I don't remember. I, I think that was Matthew. I think that question was from Matthew. Okay, and moving on to a question from Scott who is getting ready for a fall half marathon. He wants to run faster in the fall. Um, he asked, should I run faster on shorter distances or run long distances at a comfortable pace? I have not really done threshold or tempo runs in his training. And Scott, definitely, I'm a big fan of tempo runs but not before you build your aerobic base first. As I said, oh man, I'll try and find the vlog. If, if I find it, it'll pop out in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, basically, oh yeah, it's a vlog titled uh, Build Your Aerobic Engine First. Go watch that. I explain this in, in great detail where I like to build a bigger uh, base uh, so imagine the, the uh, pyramids over in, in, in Egypt, the bigger the base, the taller the peak, or the taller the pyramid you can, you can build. If the top of that pyramid is getting to the starting line as fit as possible, the, the bigger your aerobic base, the taller you can build your pyramid, meaning the faster you can run on race day. So Scott, I, I'm actually just going to say to everybody, go watch that vlog upper right hand corner and it will really go into detail on that answer. Good question, Scott. Okay. And moving on to the next question. Here we go. And again, I didn't write down the name. This gentleman or lady asks, I explained the concept of a training cycle or training block and when you should have a prolonged period of rest. Oh, I'm, I actually already made another vlog about this. Uh, go click on this card, upper right hand corner. So my thesis is that in a calendar year, I'll just outline very briefly, in a calendar year, you can have three to four training blocks in a calendar year. Personally, I think one of the reasons I'm injured right now is because this current training block was just a little too long. And I'm going to go into detail maybe tomorrow as to why I think I got injured and what shoes contributed to my injury. Um, but three to four training blocks per, per calendar year. And I always like to take two weeks off um, at, around Christmas and then after a training block. So let's say if you start in January, your the end of your first training uh, training block would be early, no, January, February, March, late March, early April. I always like to take seven to 10 days, maybe 14 days if you're really tired after a peak race. So that's my short answer. Go watch that vlog, upper right hand corner. I go into great detail about that. All right, moving on. Here we go. This is from Pre. Hey, Seth. Seth. I run distance in high school and I have trouble with motivating myself to go on runs alone in order to build an aerobic base. How do you motivate yourself to go on runs alone? So this is a little different. Um, it's not as much, it's more focused on mental. Uh, Pre, good question. It is connected to training though. And I wrote back to Pre, like make sure you are writing down um, specific goals. That is really key. Know your why in your training and why you are shooting for a particular race. For me, my motivation was very, very high for Cleveland. It still is very high, but obviously the injury is making me reevaluate everything. But Pre, that is my short answer. Um, if you want to learn more about mental toughness, again, upper right hand corner. There you go. Okay, moving on. This is from Gasper and I believe he's from Slovenia. That is correct. He's 16 years old and he's already getting ready to race a five, uh, 50K. Congrats, Gasper. That's a long ways for a 16 year old, but I commend you if you can stay healthy and get after it. And he just ran his first half marathon in 147, uh, an hour and 47 minutes. So that's really solid. And he's basically looking for tips. So Gasper, I am just going to caution you. Um, I think it's okay that you're you're shooting for a 50. Okay, no, I'm actually going to say, be careful. Uh, jumping from a half marathon to a 50K is a big jump. I just want you to stay healthy. And you're 16 years old. Um, don't hesitate to, like, it's okay. I'm not going to uh, say don't race the 50K, but if you just really, really monitor what how your body is feeling, because if you want to, running a 50K and racing a 50K is totally, you know, you could probably go out and finish a 50K, 50K tomorrow. But as far as being ready to race it, it will beat your body up. The training will, will beat your body up and the racing will definitely beat your body up. You got to make sure that you're really honed in to how your body is feeling. Now, let's say that you can stay healthy. I would recommend really mixing in and I don't know what type of 50K you're racing. Does it have a lot of vertical? Is it flatter? I don't know, but I would recommend mixing in quite a bit of hill work 
into your training. Don't necessarily go out and run, you know, 100 miles a week or 160 kilometers a week. I would focus more on uh, making sure your legs are strong. Uh, again, you can do that in different ways. Hill running, and I'm not saying hill repeats, hill running. So continuous hill run, like, and it doesn't have to be big mountains. It can be rolling hills. It's amazing how much rolling hills can add to your leg strength. So also plyometrics or going to a gym and doing squats, deadlifts. Again, I don't know your background. If you don't know how to do those, don't go do them. Make sure you find a professional or somebody who really knows how to help you in the gym. But I'm a big, big fan of not necessarily big, crazy volume for 50Ks, 50 milers, but instead leg strength. So that's my tip. Um, I hope, I don't want to discourage you. I just want to caution you that I've been down that road and it can be daunting physically on the body. But I'm here for you. Keep asking questions, Gasper. I got your back. All right, moving on here to Mark. He asks, hi, Seth. I find I get my fastest improvements Doing hard intervals, fart licks, and tempo runs, I base my improvements by race results, uh, but I believe I don't have good a good aerobic engine. Over the winter, he's been doing longer, slower runs. How do you know if you uh, are building a good aerobic base? So I would say, Mark, if you want to figure out if your aerobic base is getting better, I would recommend uh, don't do interval work, don't do tempo work, and basically do a, let's say a, a 5K or a 10K personal time trial. Or you could do a race, but even just mark off a 5K or 10K distance, go race, go run it pretty hard, basically all out. So you might wanna do, it a, do a race, um, but then go back to the same course six weeks later and see and continue to do the slow aerobic development and maybe increase your volume just a little bit, maybe by five to 10%. So your weekly volume of, of kilometers or mileage or miles, and then just go back and do another time trial. And I bet, I bet you're gonna run faster. And that means your aerobic development is happening, all right? So don't do speed work, just build your aerobic engine, but make sure you have uh, goal posts. So let's say it's, uh, let's say you do it, you know, June 1st, and then do it July 15th. So you have six weeks to build your aerobic engine. All right, does that make sense? So I'm a big fan of time trials to figure out and gauge where your aerobic fitness is at, but you might just wanna do races. Good question from Mark. And yes, I need to take a drink of water. Here we go. And we're back. Moving on from Mark to Mandy. Mandy is, um, she wants to take on her first full marathon next year. Um, she's, she was interested in some online running plans or possibly hiring a coach. And I told Mandy that I would write, I told her like, I wouldn't hire a coach yet. I would first run, like run a marathon and see how much you enjoy it. And if you really enjoy it and you feel like, okay, this is great. I want to pursue it more. Then I said, okay, maybe after your first marathon, look into hiring a coach. I just said, you know, get one under your belt first. And then she goes on to ask, uh, she's been running for 11 years in high school and college. Uh, she runs about three times a week with one speed workout or tempo day. Um, she's also done three half marathons and she's, uh, she's, a, she's new to running longer races. And I basically told her if she can increase from three days a week to five days a week, I guarantee you she's going to see some, some improvements in her times. And then I also said, if you could mix in one extra day of cross training on top of that five days. So maybe running seven days a week is too much, Mandy. I get it. Um, and some people like their bodies just can't quite handle that. And I think it's good to listen to your body as I keep preaching. Um, so I would increase from three days a week to five, mix in one day of cross training. So the pool or a stationary bike or any sort of bike. And then uh, Mandy, I would also... I think the tempo runs once a week is fine. I think you could decrease that though to actually twice twice a month. Um, again, just building that aerobic engine, making sure, Mandy, that you're mixing in one really quality long run, which I don't know your background, but let's say you're shooting for, I think I wrote back to her, If she, I said to her, if you could shoot for 50 miles a week, if you're getting ready for a full marathon, that would be awesome. It's um, You can go higher than that, but if you could, get really close to that 50 mile a week mark, you're going to see dramatic improvements in your 
uh, time. So Mandy, I hope that helps. And again, don't know all your background, but send me more questions if you have them. All right, moving on here. We're almost done. This is from uh, AU on Instagram. And he says he's a 14 year old runner. Uh, looks like he lives in, or he's running a 5k in Los Angeles soon. And let's see, I am running a 5k and I'm wondering if you can tell me how to train or training schedule. His personal best is 1809. And he says here that he's running 70 to 80 miles a week. And he's 14 year old, 14 years old. I'm not sure if that's correct. If you are running that much, I would say a you that that's probably too much. Just call in a spade a spade and this is where you might not want to listen to me, but uh, maybe you've been running at high volume since you were in middle school and you've stayed completely healthy. I don't know, but I would, I would caution you to, I would say, decrease your miles. I really would. You're probably a freshman in high school, maybe sophomore, and think about your long-term development. If you're running 70 to 80 miles a week and your personal best is 1809, I would say something is off. Like your time, I think you, you might be training tired. Like you might be racing tired. You're, that time should be lower. I'm just calling it as it is. I would recommend dropping down AU to 35 miles a week, maybe 40. And just like <laughs> hone in on some more quality speed sessions, interval training, and be patient. You've got all the time in the world. You're gonna get fast. 1809 for a 14 year old is a great time, but I bet you'll run 17, 15 in six months from now. If you decrease your volume and increase your quality speed work, specifically on dirt roads, uh, grass courses, etc., etc. I just want you to stay healthy, brother. All right, does that sound good? Oh, okay, that was awesome. I think that is all of my question, all the questions from you. Again, you can always email me. My email is down below. Uh, Instagram is a good place to ask short questions. Don't, you know, I can't answer a huge long question, but short questions on Instagram. And of course we can connect on Strava. I hope that helps, helps you give a little bit of my philosophy behind training. And again, I will be developing 5k training videos sooner rather than later for many of you out there that are interested in that distance. And I love you. Thanks for being here. Keyword is training and the question of the day. Just want to make sure I get it right. What facet of training is the most confusing or perplexing to you? What facet? And listen, there's literally, pro if you want, if you really get down to it, there's probably hundreds of different ways uh, to break this question of the day down. But what facet of training is confusing or perplexing to you? All right. I know that's a little open-ended. I don't want to, I want to just hear from you. So I will do my best to field those questions as well. Thank you guys for your patience. We're two, we're, oh, we're actually like two and a half weeks in on the crutches. Heading to Monday will be, 